The year 2021 has so far been an eventful year, from defections to insecurity to gubernatorial elections to strikes and much more. Well, this is a countdown of the major political events that took place this year in Nigeria. 1. The arrest of Sunday Iboho and Namdi Kanu. Calls for secession were particularly heard this year, especially from the southeast and the western part of the country. In the southeast, the group which championed the cause was the indigenous people of Biafra and it was led by Nam Dikanu. In the west, it was the Odudua Republic, led by Sunday Adeemo, also known as Sunday Iboho. On different occasions, we woke up to their arrest. That of Sunday Iboho was on the 20th of July in Kotoni, Benin Republic, three weeks after he had been declared wanted by the federal government. Nam Dikanu was arrested on the 29th of June in Ethiopia. He was, however, extradited to Nigeria days later. He was charged to court for terrorism and treason, for which he pleaded not guilty. Although Igboho remained in Benin Republic where he was accused of entering the public illegally and planning to cause trouble, he has denied the charges. 2. Pantami Scandal Isa Pantami, Minister of Communications and Digital Economy, fought and won a battle against Nigerians this year. Recordings of him expressing views sympathetic to groups such as the Al-Qaeda and Boko Haram began to circulate on the social media. In one sermon from the 2000s, he said he considered Al-Qaeda founder Osama bin Laden a better Muslim than himself. And in another, he said he was happy when infidels were massacred. Nigerians trooped to various platforms and called for his resignation or sacking by President Muhammadu Buhari, even though the minister had said he had denounced his extremist beliefs. However, the presidency declared support for the embattled minister and said the administration would comment an investigation into allegations that some businesses were behind the attacks on the minister. 3. Southern Governors Ban Open Grazing The issue of killer headsmen dominated many parts of Nigeria, especially the southern part of the country. Some of the herders were accused of committing criminal acts like armed robbery, kidnappings and murder. In addition, open grazing of cattle had often caused conflicts between host communities and migrant herders, leading to several deaths in many states. The governors of 17 states in southern Nigeria then resolved to ban open grazing of cattle in their states. This was part of the 12 resolutions reached by the governors in Asaba, the Delta State Capital. The spokesman of the Northern Elders Forum, Hakim Baba Ahmed, responded to the development, stating that the ban was counterproductive and damaging to the nation's spirit of coexistence. 4. Twitter Ban Nigerians were banned from using Twitter on the 5th of June, shortly after the application deleted a tweet posted by President Muhammadu Buhari, which had been seen as threatening agitators for Biafra. Before the ban was implemented, Please the Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed, stated that Twitter's mission in Nigeria was suspicious. The tech company had deleted President Muhammadu Buhari's tweet where he issued a threat to troublemakers in the country while making reference to Nigeria's civil war. While defending its actions, Twitter said the president's tweets violated its rules. The ban has remained till December 2021. 5. 2023, Tinumbu's alleged interest in presidency. The battle for the 2023 presidential seat began in earnest this year. Personalities like Peter Obi, Governor Yahaya Bello of Kogi State, Kingsley Mogalu and others revealed or indirectly attributed to their intention to run. However, what shocked most Nigerians was the emergence of Swaga, the Southwest Agenda for Asiwaju, a campaign organization for the presidency of Bola Tinubu come 2023. Although other groups all over the country in the north and south have openly campaigned for him, he has not come out in person to declare his interest. He has, however, not stated that he will not run. 6. Loretha honored Chie's nomination as INEC National Commissioner. In October 2020, President 
Muhammad Buhari appointed his personal assistant on social media, Loretta Onochi. As a resident electoral commissioner of the Independent National Electoral Commission representing Delta State, this nomination sparked an uproar as she was known for her pro Buhari post on social media. It was believed that anyone who would hold the position of INI commissioner would not be affiliated with any political party. Many citizens kicked against the nomination and the followed screening. Even the PDP held a demonstration at the National Assembly to protest the nomination. But despite the backlash, the Senate carried on with the screening process. During this process, Onoche denied being a member of the All Progressives Congress. She was, however, rejected by the Senate in July 2021. 7. Uche Sekundus sacked from National PDP Chairman position. Prince Uche Sekundus, the now former National Chairman of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, fought a battle to keep his position at the PDP. He, however, failed. A crisis rocked the party as several party national executives defected to the ruling All Progressives Congress APC, and many, led by Governor Yesum Wike of River State, blamed Secundus and called for his resignation. But he vowed to hold on to his position until his tenure was up. In August, he was suspended from the party as a court in River State restrained him from parading himself as a chairman or member of the party. The deputy national chairman south of the party, Uyami Akiwumi, then suspended the meeting of the party's national working committee indefinitely. Secondus then filed an appeal asking the court to stop the PDP from conducting a national convention wherein it could choose new party executives. However, in October, the Court of Appeal Port Harcourt Division dismissed the suit and gave the PDP the go-ahead to hold the convention. 8. Pandora Papers, Nigerians Implicated in what could be tagged the biggest journalism partnership in history under the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists, ICIJ, millions of leaked documents uncovered financial secrets of 35 current and former world leaders, more than 330 politicians and public officials in 91 countries and territories, and a global lineup of fugitives, con artists and murderers. Nigeria was not left out. In Nigeria, Personalities like former governor of Anambra State, Peter Obi, the acting managing director, Nigerian Port Authority, Mohamed Bello Koko, a former minister and serving senator, Stella Odua, Governor Abubakar Bagudu of Kebi State, Governor Boega Oyetola of Oshun State, former Lagos State Governor Bola Tinumbo and Ogun State Governor Dakwa Abiodun were fingered in the published reports. Although the Nigerian government was called upon by citizens and stakeholders to investigate those mentioned, nothing definite was done. 9. President Buhari Signs PIB Finally, the President Muhammad Buhari signed the Petroleum Industry Bill 2021 into law weeks after the National Assembly passed the bill. The bill had remained at the National Assembly for more than a decade, with successive sessions of the Senate and House of Representatives failing to approve its provisions of sweeping reforms for the oil and gas sector. However, the bill's eventual passage on July 15th was deemed by a controversy over the allocation of 3% revenue to host communities in the Niger Delta, while a fund for the exploration of oil in frontier basins, mostly in northern states, received 30%. The bill was rejected by the Southern Governors Forum and leaders of the South-South region, including a former minister, Edwin Clark. Representatives of the area demanded 10% or in the minimum 5% as earlier passed by the House of Representatives. 10. Anambra Election in spite of the security challenges faced by the Southeast and Anambra State in particular, the state was able to hold its election 
It was held in November and was won by the candidate of the All Progressives Grand Alliance, APGA, Charles Soludo, a former governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria. His major contenders were Andy Uba of the All Progressives Congress and Valentine Ozigbo of the People's Democratic Party. The election was, however, declared inconclusive as the election could not be held in a big local government area, Ihiala, due to insecurity. But by then, Soludo had already won the majority of the local governments. When the supplementary election was held, there were again reports of late INEC officials along with a three-hour long battle between police and gunmen which disrupted voting in two communities. Despite this incident, most of the LGA was able to hold elections and in the early morning of November 10th, Soludo was declared the winner as Iyala's votes did not make up the difference for either Ozigo or Uba. 11. Invasion of Justice Mary Odili's House in late October, the Nigerian polity was once again set aflame when the house of a Supreme Court Justice, Mary Odili, was invaded. In response to this development, Governor Yesom Wiki and leaders of River State issued a 48-hour ultimatum to the federal government to bring to book those behind the invasion. The River's leaders warned that should anything bad happen to Justice Odili or her husband, the federal government should be held accountable. Also reacting, the House of Representatives Committee on Judiciary called for an urgent, discreet investigation into the siege. Two weeks later, 14 persons were arrested in connection with the invasion. In a turn of events, one of the suspects, Lawrence Ajodo, claimed that he was a consultant engaged by the Attorney General of the Federation, AGF, and Minister of Justice, Abubakar Malami. Malami denied this, challenging Ajodo to present documentary evidence of engagement. And the last 12 enters Judicial Panel of Inquiry releases reports. The Lagos State Enters Judicial Panel of Inquiry set up by the state government released its report, which had found out that soldiers of the Nigerian army deployed by the military hierarchy to the Lekki Togate on October 20, 2020, shot, injured and killed unarmed helpless and defenseless protesters without provocation or justification. The panel also found out that officers of the Nigerian police force who were deployed to the toll gate on the night of the incident shot at, assaulted and battered unarmed protesters which led to injuries and deaths, thus aiding the army in the commission of a massacre on unarmed civilians. The findings of the panel put to rest repeated denials by the army, the Nigerian government and the Lagos state government that a massacre was committed by the soldiers of the 65th Battalion of the 81st Garrison Division Bonicamp led by Sanusi Obada Belu, a lieutenant colonel. And there you have it, the 12 major political events of 2021. The year has been a cacophony of events, but it's not over yet. For Plus TV Africa, Adebanke Odunui.